Within You Is The Power by Henry Thomas Hamblin. Preface. There is a power lying hidden in man by the use of which he can rise to higher and better things. There is in man a greater self that transcends the finite self of the sense man, even as the mountain towers above the plain. The object of this little book is to help men and women to bring their inward powers of mind and spirit into expression, wisely and in harmony with universal law, to build up character and to find within themselves that wondrous self, which is their real self, and which when found reveals to them that they are literally and truly sons of God and daughters of the Most High. There is no way whereby the discipline of life can be avoided. There are no means by which fate can be tricked, nor cunning device by which the great cosmic plan can be evaded. Each life must meet its own troubles and difficulties. Each soul must pass through its deep waters. Every heart must encounter sorrow and grief, but none need be overwhelmed in the great conflicts of life, for one who has learned the great secret of his identity with the universal life and power dwells in an impregnable city built upon and into the rock of truth against which the storms of life beat in vain. While this little work does not offer any vain promises of an easy life, if this were possible, it would be the greatest of all disasters, but rather endeavours to show how to become so strong that life looks almost easy by comparison. The life of fate does not change or become easier, but the individual alters and becomes stronger. Yet, it does show the reader how to avoid making his life more difficult than it need be. Most people's lives would be less filled with trouble and suffering if they took life in the right spirit and acted in harmony with universal law. It is hoped that this little book may help many to come into harmony with life's law and purpose and thus avoid much needless suffering to find the greater self within, which discovery brings with it a realization of absolute security, to bring into expression and wisely use the inner spiritual and mental forces and thus enter a life of overcoming and almost boundless power. Chapter 1 Infinite Life and Power Man possesses did he but know it, illimitable power. This power is of the spirit, therefore it is unconquerable. It is not the power of the ordinary life or finite will or human mind. It transcends these because being spiritual, it is of a higher order than either physical or even mental. This power lies dormant and is hidden within man until he is sufficiently evolved and unfolded to be entrusted with its use. The powers of the subconscious mind are dealt with in other chapters. The powers of the spirit are far greater and finer than those of the subconscious mind. Thought is a spiritual power of tremendous potency, but this is not the power of which we speak. By thought, man can either raise himself up and connect himself with the powerhouse of the universe, or cut himself off entirely from the divine inflow. His thought 
is his greatest weapon because by it he can either draw upon the infinite or sever himself in consciousness but not in reality from his divine source. Through the divine spark within him, which is really his real self, man is connected with the infinite. Divine life and power are his, if he realizes that they are his. So long as he is ignorant of his oneness with the divine source of all life, he is incapable of appropriating the power that is really his. If, however, he enters into this inner knowledge, he finds himself the possessor of infinite power and unlimited resources. This power, then, is God's, yet it is also man's, but it is not revealed to him until he is fit to be entrusted with it. It is only when man realizes his oneness with his divine source that he becomes filled with its power. Many teachers and initiates lament the fact that certain secrets are being spread, broadcast today. Secrets that, in the past, were kept closely guarded. They fear that unillumined and unevolved people may make destructive use of spiritual power. This, to the writer, appears to be impossible. It is true that strong personalities who have a great belief in their own power to achieve and succeed, draw unconsciously on hidden powers and thus are able to raise themselves high above their fellows. The use, however, that they can make of spiritual power for base purposes is limited and it is not to be feared. There are others, of course, who are misusing their powers. These are black magicians and while they may do a certain amount of harm, they become reduced, ultimately, to beggary and impotence. There are also others who spend the whole of their spare time searching for knowledge of this very subject. They read every occult book they can lay hands on, but they never find that for which they seek. There are spiritual powers and influences that withhold the eyes of the seekers from seeing until they are ready for the revelation. When man, in his search for truth, has given up all selfish striving after unworthy things and has ceased to use his self-will in conflict with the greater will of the whole, he is ready for the revelation of his oneness with the infinite. Yielding implicitly to the will of the whole may seem to the unillumined an act of weakness, yet it is the entrance to a life of almost boundless power. Man is not separate from his divine source and never has been. He is, in reality, one with the infinite. The separation which he feels and experiences is mental and is due to his blindness and unbelief. Man can never be separated from spirit, for he himself is spirit. He is an integral part of one complete whole. He lives and moves and has his being in God, universal, omnipresent spirit. And God, spirit, dwells in him. The majority of people are unaware of this intimate relationship with the divine and because they are unaware or because they refuse to believe it they are in one sense separated from the inner life of God yet this separation is only in their thoughts and beliefs and not in reality man is not separated and never can be 
Yet so long as he believes that he is separate and alone, he will be as weak and helpless as though he actually were. As soon as man realizes the truth of his relationship to the infinite, he passes from weakness to power, from death unto life. One moment he is in the desert afar off, weak, separate and alone. The next he realizes that he is nothing less than a son of God, with all a son's privileges and powers. He realizes in a flash that he is one with his divine source and that he can never be separated. He awakens also to the fact that all the power of the infinite is his to draw upon, that he can never really fail, that he is marching on to victory. It will thus be seen how great is the power of man's thought. While thoughts is not the power of the spirit, it is the power by which man either connects himself up with the infinite power, opening himself to the divine inflow, or cuts himself off and separates himself from his spiritual source. Thus, in a sense, man is what he thinks he is. If he thinks he is separate from God and cut off from his power, then it is though this were really the case, and he is just as impotent and miserable as though he actually existed apart from God. On the other hand, if he thinks and believes that he is one with the infinite, he finds that it is gloriously true and that he really is a son of God. If he believes and thinks that he is a mere material being, then he lives the limited life of material being and is never able to rise above it. But if, on the contrary, he thinks and believes that he is a spiritual being, then he finds that he possesses all the powers of a spiritual being. Again, if he thinks that his work is difficult and that he is not equal to his tasks, he finds that really his tasks are difficult and beyond his powers. Yet, on the other hand, if he believes his work is easy or at any rate within his powers, he finds that such is the case and that he can do his work with ease. The power within is infinite, for by faith in it, man is directly coupled up with the spiritual power of the universe. The divine spark within him connects him to the sacred flame, thus making him potentially a god in the making. A change, then, must take place within man before he can enter into his divine inheritance. He must learn to think after the spirit, i.e. as a spiritual being, instead of after the flesh, i.e. as a material creature. Like the prodigal son, he must come to himself and leave the husks and the swine in the far country, returning to his father's house, where there is bread of life, enough and to spare. End of chapter 1